has been the defender of what? Religious freedom. We say, oh, the Statue of Liberty, that liberty is there. And there are people from New York. You think that that Statue of Liberty is about liberty? You know where that statue came from? Oh, yes. I see some of you have been studying the message. <laughs> we don't have time to go there tonight, but you understand it had nothing to do with freedom, not religious freedom. This says, but as the question of enforcing Sunday observance shall be what? Widely agitated. The event so long doubted and disbelieved is seen. It's what? It's what? You mean to tell me that we can actually see it? We can see when God takes the reins? And we can see when the son in law is approaching, it says the event so long doubted and disbelieved is seen to be approaching, and the third message will do what? Will produce an effect in which it could not have had before. What is it about this time that will produce an effect in which it could not have had before? What is it about it? Come on, talk to me, somebody. What is it about the message then? What is it about the message then that will produce an effect in which it could not have had before? Why is it that it could not have had this effect before? It's right there. Look what it says. The event so long doubted and disbelieved. You know how many people today you say that we have a few short months, they say you're a fanatic. You say a Sunday law is coming, you say, well, everywhere you look, you've been talking about a Sunday law. But when it is seen to be approaching, it will produce a different effect. I went to one place and one person said to me, if the Sunday law was really so close as a few short months to a few short years, why don't I see it in the newspapers? I just took down the newspapers and threw them on the floor and said, which one you want to read them in? <laughs> it's everywhere, look. Look. And on the seventh day we rested. Maybe those old blue laws weren't so crazy after all. Why isn't Sunday special anymore? That was Huntsville Times. Germany, talking about right now, you know that right now in Germany, I was just there in Germany, and they're saying now ruling in favor of the Catholic and Lutheran churches, Germany's highest court has found that the city of Berlin's 10 shopping Sundays a year ago against the constitutional protection of Sundays as a day of what? Rest. All over the world. Do you know that you don't have to be an Adventist to believe a Sunday law is coming? Before, only the seven Adventists believed that the Sunday laws were coming. Today, every person with a thinking mind knows that Sunday laws are coming. They simply don't know what it means. The atheist knows Sunday laws are coming. Here it is, USA Today. Sunday shopping ban where? Croatia. The Croatian parliament has passed a law forcing shops to close on Sundays in a concession to the Roman Catholic Church just a couple of years ago. Germany, Croatia. All over Europe, I was in Europe and they were talking about the same thing. They voted on February 2009, protect Sunday as a weekly rest day. All of the European Union came together and they voted on this. And as of 2011, they've already tried to protect it. Jewish, Jewish life. This was Israeli news. Governments to consider adding Sunday as a day of rest. July 5th, 2011. That was just a few weeks ago. PM appoints head of what? National what? I wonder why the Economic Council. I wonder if there's going to be a relationship between the economic crisis and this worldwide Sunday law. And let me tell you something. When this crisis hits, you're going to want to hear, what, when is, was anybody here in the country living class in this room? Did you hear that country living class? Oh, my brothers and sisters, we have to be like Joseph was when that son in law has passed to be in position. But my friends, it's almost here. We must put that principles into practice. Now, PM appoints head of the National Economic Council as chairman of the committee to look not for ways of making money, look for what? Into making Sunday a day of rest. Everywhere. All over the world, this is everywhere. Oregon, front cover. Anybody from Oregon? Oregon auto dealers want a Sunday's off law. Why? 
because of an economic crisis. My brothers and my sisters, that economic crisis that has already started since 2008 has two great phases and 2011 we come to the second and final phase and my friends we are in it now do you know what happened on january 1st 2011 we don't even have time to go through all that listen oh wait oh. i'm gonna go past this right now Inspiration says we should know exactly where we are. Look what this says, Great Controversy 590. It says, it will be declared that men are offending God by the violation of the Sunday Sabbath and that this sin has brought calamities which will not cease until Sunday observance shall be what? Strictly enforced. Now this is talking about the passing of a Sunday law. Now notice the economic condition when the Sunday law passes. Because remember, Yesterday, I said that there are three things that are intensely connected in the Bible. In James chapter 5, number one was what? Economic crisis. Number two was what? Early and latter rain. Number three was what? Heart religion. And every one of these things are happening. In fact, look at this. It says, and that those who present the claims of the fourth commandment, thus destroying reverence for Sunday, are troublous of the people preventing their restoration to divine favor and what type of prosperity what is that talking about I want to ask you a question to overstate the simple what is the economic condition that America and the world will be in when a Sunday law is passed it has to be an economic crisis because the Sunday law is passed to restore prosperity and if you're in prosperity no need to pass the law to restore it are you with me so when the Sunday law is passed we it must be during a time of economic crisis and what I'm telling you is that we are at the end of that economic crisis here's a prophetic chart now we don't have time to run down the whole prophetic chart but since 1990 the prophet tells us of six great events that will lead to the passing of the Sunday law. Number five is the economic uh, crisis that started in 2008 to the level of bringing the Sunday law. An uh, economic collapse in the United States of America. How many were here last year? How many were here last year at camp meeting? Does anybody remember the message I presented on the second night of camp meeting? Anybody remember what it was called? No way out. You know this appeared in the paper just a few months ago? What did it say? No way way out look at what they say no way out isn't just a movie title it's becoming a legislative way of life talking about the economy now look at what the prophet says great controversy 440 she says again and again the thought almost the exact what words of the sacred writer has been unconsciously employed by the orator and the historian in describing the rise and growth of this nation, talking about America when the Sunday laws passed. Do you know that the, this woman was a prophet? Do you know that their very words, I'm, we're not going to, oh, I wish we had time. I want to tell you to it all tonight. Somebody said, tell it. <laughs> look, my brother and sister, I know, look, I, want to, I, I can't force feed you. I can see you ate enough. When we come back tomorrow night, we need to see how close we are to this event. Because listen to me. Look what it says. I'm not going to go through this now. We'll come back to this because we're going to actually find out that this is the exact way is there. This no way out. No way out of the debt trap. Gross says, U.S. living standards are what? We were doing a meeting just a, a few weeks ago in Weimar, California. That whole place wants to change this program to become an outpost center, to operate the program properly. We were there doing some planning, and we're supposed to go back and do some more studies and teach about this same program. It's time to become what Joseph was in Egypt. It's time to use the head and the hands and the heart 
harmoniously for the finishing of the work. But my brothers and sisters, when we were there, a question was asked. They said, I told them that August 2nd was going to be an important day because at that point, that came to the end of the debt ceiling. And August the 2nd, if we didn't pass that new law to raise the debt ceiling, America would have been totally out of money and could no longer have paid any of those bills. Money, all gone. And now people got excited because when they raised the ceiling, anybody who does not understand the nature of money think that that was the best thing that could have happened. My friends, that assures you that a noose has been put around your neck. And someone's getting ready to kick the chair. This is it. And the reason why I am so burdened tonight is because many of us are satisfied with a stony ground heart. No depth. Satisfied with just talking about religion. But we don't have it here. And the way it's demonstrated is because it is not revealed in our lives. My friends, there is no way out. You know what this says? It says it's doomed to, to fall. You know they said that, that, does anybody know who Gaither is, who Timothy Gaither is? Secretary, Treasurer of the United States. He said that the debt ceiling was not raised, that our standards of living will be more severe than what happened during the Depression of 1929. He said it will make it look like days of great prosperity. That in America, that the conditions will go back to third world conditions. Do you know that the only way to live during a time of third world conditions are people who have learned to use their hands? Do you understand that this is the purpose of true education? And this is why the devil is so afraid of it? Because he knows that if this takes place, that if he can keep us from getting this experience, we fail. But do you know that what this man was bringing out, and I'm going to show you to tomorrow, that this says that no matter what way you go, the standards of living is still going to go down. That we are getting ready to see in the next few months that the problem of buying and selling will be a very serious problem. Someone says, oh, that's not serious. Not buying or selling is not serious. Well, listen, if Jesus said it's going to be a serious problem, it's going to be a serious problem. That wasn't the man saying it's going to be a serious problem. That was the testimony of Jesus. And yet I hear people saying, oh, no, buying and selling is not serious. I'm just going to just say, oh, yes, it's going to be all right. It's going to be a very serious problem. And we're going to have to learn how to use these hands. Listen, if Joseph didn't know anything practical, Joseph would have stayed in the prison if he didn't know how to solve the problems. He would have languished in a dungeon cell. But something happened. But my friends, listen. Just learning how to use the hands is not enough. Just learn how to use the head. It's not enough. What we need is to learn how to use these hearts. We don't love Jesus. Look what the prophet says. Jesus is coming. I want you to see this. Oh, we'll come back to this. You will see it's almost here. Cleansing the outside of the cup will never make the vessel pure within. A nominal acceptance of truth is good. Nothing wrong with that. Good as far as it goes. And the ability to give a reason for our faith is a what? Good accomplishment. Is it bad to have intellectual training? It's good. But is it enough? It's good accomplishment, but, but what Jesus? 
But if the truth does not go, what's that next word?